Welcome back, everybody. When it's hot outside, the last thing anyone wants to do is to turn on the oven. And that's why we brought in our next guest. Here to keep our kitchens cool with easy, no-cook meal ideas is Zero Waste Chef and Love Food, Hate Waste Canada Ambassador, Christine Tizard. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, when we say boating in the summer, we think we're on the water. Yes. But you're saying boating in the kitchen is great in the summer. What do you mean by that? So... A boat, to me, is kind of like the perfect vessel for a meal. And in this case, I'm going to take avocados and make little boats out of them. And they're like, for me, lifeboats for my leftovers because <laughs> I just love avocado anyways. Cut one in half, take out the pit, and put like almost anything on top of it. Drizzle a little vinaigrette or your you're favorite right. salad dressing. And you have... Best of luck oh, you're okay. just gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go bold here. I made them really Lady. big, and I'm sorry. I'm I gonna, shouldn't have. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm. Oh my God, so good. That's very. That's so Cynthia. It's so Cynthia. I'm diving in. Go, right Can right we in. talk so about sorry. the? I, I, this is a, an aioli, but it's a turmeric one. So yes, it's a turmeric aioli. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a trip to Mexico a few years ago, and that's where I got the idea. I just kind of stole it from the restaurant I was at. But basically, it's a mayonnaise-based mm. uh, dressing so good. with ground turmeric. Now, if you can't find the fresh turmeric, you can always just use, you know, the pre-bought brown stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit of lemon. You've got a little bit of ginger in there. You have your, your turmeric and you drizzle it on top mm, and it just kind of makes it, lifts yeah. it up a little bit. It's so good. Okay, let's talk about crudos and ceviches. Yes. What's the difference? <laughs> so crudo ceviche for me, it's like, the great summertime raw seafood meal. You don't have to do much of it. You just got to get a good quality sushi grade, you know, fish, fish to do it. But the difference between a ceviche and a crudo is that a crudo basically is your raw fish thinly sliced and it's usually drizzled with olive oil, some flake sea salt, or you put just a nice vinaigrette over top and you serve it. Ceviche though, they tend to use the term cooked. It's not like cooked, but it's cooked, yeah. um, but basically it's marinated in something that's more like citrus bold. So the citrus mm -hmm. kind of cooks the chunks of ceviche and that's how it's served. Okay, so, so you brought us a crudo here today. Um, tell us yes. about how you made it. So this, I love, it's almost tomato season and I'm growing tomatoes in my garden right now and I always have too many tomatoes, right? Yes. And you get one that's a little bit bruised or a little mm. bit mushy. So what mm. I did was mm -hmm. I grated the tomato and used that as the base for my vinaigrette. So easily with a box grater, you can grate it and it leaves the skin behind, which, which is, is really perfect. good. It's really good. And then I added my lemon juice, my red onion, I drizzled it on top with a really nice finishing oil, some flaked sea salt, and then whatever greens you have on hand, you know, you can just throw in there with it. And there you go. It's Bro. so bright and yeah. fresh. Oh my gosh, okay. The, e the easy hack to tell it apart though from ceviche is that crudo is sliced and then ceviche is usually cubed, Chunks, right? Yes. Chunks, yes. yeah, okay. Yes. Um, you're gonna surprise people with your next suggestion because you, oh, you want us to try panna cottas as a meal instead of as a dessert. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, maybe maybe I missed maybe I miscommunicated that. So that. The panna cotta is a fantastic dessert. It, you get it out of the fridge. It's cool. It's it's typically cream based. So you take a cream, you add sugar, you steep it with some vanilla, something like that. But I kind of changed it up a bit. Instead of using cream, I used a, a, a mixture of coconut milk and almond milk to make it lighter. I cut back the sugar way, way back. Okay. And then I added a, mm. <laughs> a little raspberry coulis on top. Oh. So for me, it's healthy enough that you could have for breakfast. It is so, so okay. good. It's, it's so good. So with granola, wow. with fresh berries, and it's so easy it's, to make. It's, Mel's gonna be all it's over so this easy for her to make. She's not allowed. Yeah. She's Ten gonna be minutes for her breakfast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can have this made and in the fridge. Wow. and Five ingredients. That's all you need. And this is a great recipe to also reduce waste, right? How's that? Because berries that are a little bit past their prime. You can almost mm. use any type of pureed fruit with, with this. You can even use frozen fruit, so it's a way to use that up. But my favorite thing is that it lasts in your fridge for up to 10 to 12 days. What? So, I mean, really? you'll, you'll eat it in 10 to 12 oh my days. Gosh, I'm obsessed. I don't wanna put it down, but I'm gonna have to, because we're moving on to fresh spring rolls. Fresh spring rolls, I do love, with these rice, um, this rice paper, like yes. why do you love to make these? 
Because for me, it's like quick and easy, uses up leftovers like leftover protein or anything like that. I've made this with smoked tofu, so it's like just the tofu that's been sliced and I just added in there. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about making them myself is typically when you get them in a restaurant, they are like just packed with lettuce or noodles and you don't get any mm -hmm. of the good stuff. So this way, when you make them at home, you can really just wrap them up, put whatever you want in there, they're good to go. And I love these rice paper wrappers because they come in a variety of sizes and you can even get square ones now. I would have thought this would have been so hard to make, but you're, it's easy to roll it oh, up. Oh yeah, it's easy. You Amazing. just wet it's them in some warm water. Together. Yeah, and it kind of sticks and pulls mm -hmm. and has some give. It's yeah. amazing. There are some people in the summer who don't feel like having a heavy full meal. Not me, but a lot of people, maybe. <laughs> um, so you're suggesting to put together a grazing platter instead, yeah? Yeah, so I don't know what it's like for you guys in the summertime, but I know in my house, there's like lots of coming and going. Everyone's on a different schedule. Sometimes I don't like to eat dinner, I like to have a lunch, but I kind of feel obligated to put something out, yeah. especially if there's some people over or yes. something like that. So this grazing platter is a great way. You just put a bunch of stuff on there. It's a great way to use up condiments. That's one of my favorite things. It's like a little bit of gherkin, a little bit of this, a little bit of dip, um, variety of cheeses, variety of meats, variety of vegetables, Gorgeous. variety of fruit. Everyone gets a little something and your kind of work is done. I love you know? it. Isn't that beautiful? So, so good. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Christine, for these simple, no-cook meal ideas.